Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to the video for the second Tuesday of Advent. We hope and pray that everyone watching is doing well, and we invite you to bring your own prayers, concerns, thanksgivings, and intentions as we turn our hearts and minds to the Lord on this day. The psalm that we will uh, pray today is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. They shall exult before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Our scripture reading for today is going to come from the prophet Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. I answer, what shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all their glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower wilts, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. So then, the people is the grass. Though the grass withers and the flower wilts, the word of our God stands forever. Go up onto a high mountain. Zion, herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him, like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. Imagine a general amnesty for all prisoners in the United States. While that thought might scare us, there would be joy in many quarters. Fathers would see their families. Sons would see their parents. People would return to their communities. Many lost in the system would see hope in freedom. The impact of such an amnesty was felt by the Jews when they heard the words of the prophet Isaiah. The beginning of what we call second Isaiah we divide the book of Isaiah into three sections. This is the beginning of this is the beginning of the second section. Presented a scene of divine command and the announcement of a town crier. God pronounced a nationwide forgiveness, and the crier announced the return of the exiles. The joy of such an announcement must have accompanied the fall of Babylon to Cyrus and the Persian army in 539 BC. A year later, 
the Persian ruler enacted an etiquette of return for the Jews in the diaspora. They were to rebuild Jerusalem and restore the temple. The changing events justified the loyalty of the exiles to their God. Now the Lord could display his power, even through a foreign king. The Jewish nation could once again rally around their God. They could once again show a religious and patriotic pride. The Lord saved them. Freedom from bondage implicitly means return. Pardon from sin means return to God. As we wait for the coming of the Lord at Christmas, let's remember the words of Isaiah and their echo in the preaching of John the Baptist. You know, metanoia, repentance, means... (coughs) Excuse me. It means turn away from self-centered pursuits and turning towards the Almighty. God values and cares for each of us just as the shepherd values every single sheep. The Christian must not treat any life as less important than another, whether it's an unborn child or an unrepentant criminal. No matter how lost we become, Jesus will always love us and seek to bring us home. (coughs) And our gospel today is going to come from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 12 through 14. Jesus said to his disciples, what is your opinion? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray... Will he not leave the ninety-nine in the hills and go in search of the stray? And if he finds it, amen, I say to you, he rejoices more over it than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. In just the same way, it is not the will of your heavenly Father that one of these little ones be lost. In this passage from Matthew, Jesus mixed the image of the sheep and the little ones. In context, Jesus spoke to his followers about children. So to really understand the verses, we must investigate the status of children in ancient society. The place of the child in the time of Jesus was the exact opposite of his or her place in modern Western culture. Children lay at the bottom of the social ladder, whereas elders stood at the top. Parents had children for primarily uh, economic reasons. Love was a secondary reason. Children were laborers that increased the worth of the clan as a whole and provided care for the parents in in their old age. Since one half of all children died before the age of 16, um, many uh, from many diseases we now vaccinate against, uh, conditions encouraged people to have as many offspring as possible. So the notion of a lost child, a sheep, while tragic, wouldn't bring the economic efforts of a clan to a standstill in a world where most people lived below a substance level. Yet that was the ideal Jesus held up. Now, consider the symbolic meaning of the term child. It could refer to the core audience Jesus served, the outcast, the sinner, the ill, or it could refer to a fellow Christian as a child of God. No matter the reference, however, Jesus desired extra attention paid to the lost child, the outcast in society, the errant sinner. This care was a key component of ministry. 
God seeks to bring each of us home to him the way a shepherd searches for his lost sheep. And so now we will say our prayer on this second Tuesday of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O God, who have shown forth your salvation to all the ends of the earth, grant, we pray, that we may look forward in joy to the glorious nativity of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A moment now for your own personal reflection.
we invite you, in the words of your own language or the words of your own faith tradition, to pray the prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon you, those whom you love, and those whom you would pray for, today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And from all of us at the Catholic Community of Jeffersonville, remember to take care of yourselves and each other. And God bless my friend. <laughs>